It's time now for the John Harris Podcast on the airnetwork.net. Now, here's sports journalist extraordinaire, John Harris on the Air Network. Welcome to the John Harris Podcast on the airnetwork.net. I'm John Harris, joined by NFL draft scouting guru, Dave T. Thomas. Dave, how you doing? Hey, it's very good from where I'm sitting as far as Steeltown is looking this morning, John. I know you got some things to say about the Steelers in the draft, and I'm looking forward to doing that. I, I, I do I do want to look at the top of the draft real quick. Just your uh, your thoughts, uh, especially, I guess, at the number two pick. Some surprises. <laughs> you know, John... There's a great adage on that. Before the draft, I won't say who it was. Uh, Sometimes you don't want to put the embarrassment tag on him. But one general manager in the league says, dealing with John Lynch this year might be like stealing candy from a baby. Well, up in Chicago Bears land, it looks like the baby pickpocketed the big boy, and it's probably the biggest theft of a bear since Goldilocks stole his porridge. What, 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 what were you, I mean, apparently, according to Trubisky, that he really didn't have a lot of contact with the Bears before the draft. Isn't that surprising? I mean, number two pick is to be taken very seriously. Does that surprise you that there wasn't a lot of contact with him? No, it surprised. It even surprised the head coach. I mean, if I'm John Fox right now, before I go sit down at my desk this morning, I'm checking the oil on my seat because definitely his general manager has greased his skids for him to be fired at the end of the year. Hell, right now, I think uh, George Hollis is digging himself out of his grave to show up at the complex and kick somebody's butt on that pick. Other than Trubisky at, at two, any other surprises, good or bad, that you saw in this year's draft? Well, if you're a New York Jets fan, it was a great surprise because you ended up with the best player in the draft when Adams slid to them at number six. They're totally revamping the secondary. Uh, something over there with their general manager, though. I think he got a little bit confused by taking three safeties in the draft, especially one and two. He thought that safety in numbers meant number of safeties. I know you hate, and I hate it, you can't really analyze the draft. They have, no one's taking the field yet. We don't know what happen right so it's, it's hard to do the quick evaluation but any thoughts a few days afterwards any immediate thoughts anything to stand out for you with this draft well usually after the season and before you head out uh, for the all-star games and everything everybody is usually cleaning house in the front office and uh boy you talk about black sunday uh heads definitely rolled yesterday throughout the nfl uh, you're looking at Buffalo totally revamping their front office. You're looking at what's gone up at Indianapolis. They're getting rid of their guys. Tennessee, you lost a, a personnel man that's been there for 18 years. We're going to see a lot of changing in the guard, and unfortunately for old-time people, it's going to be a different aspect. They're bringing in these Ivy League types. They're bringing in these non-football guys, and analytics are going to start taking over in the NFL, and I don't think it's for any good. Well, you've you've told me you've have you have very strong thoughts on this. You've been doing this for a long time, and you've t- you told me you've seen this transition to a younger. Not that bringing in younger is bad, but you told me the work that workload is not the same as with the veteran scouts. They're not this younger, the millennials, whatever you want to call it. They're not putting the work in from the scouting at the scouting level that you've seen in the past. Day one of the draft, your general manager listens to nobody but himself. Day two of the draft, it's his coaches that get involved. Day three of the draft are the scouts. John, look at the NFL right now. And it was an interesting study that somebody did the other day. In the National Football League, at the end of the 2016 season, there were 421 players that were not drafted that were on an active roster. Among first and second round draft picks in the NFL, there were 400. 20. So there were more free agents than first and second round draft picks. Wow. Well, well let's, let's go. Does on. that tell you that somebody is doing wrong mathematics when they're sitting down trying to feel what's needed for a team? Hell, go look at Pittsburgh itself, the University of Pittsburgh. How could anybody reason, except for Jerry Reese saying, hell yeah, I'm going to trade up, finding Adam Bisnodley, who is rated the top rated senior going into the season, still sitting on the board in round six? That's their left tackle of the future. I know you raved about him before last season even started. I know you talked about him a lot. 
So why did he, he got not? banged up the second half of the year, got gobbled up down at the senior bowl. He shouldn't have been down there. He should have been taking care of the injury factor. So you go hurt. look at what the Steelers did. They took the running back there. Everybody else was scared about taking a running back. If Levon Bell goes down, do you really think I want Niall Davis carrying that ball? Hell no. I want Connor coming in. This is the type of kid that I want. Uh, Rushon Show will probably end up being the third stringer, and that was a great pickup for them on the free agent market. But look what they decided to do. You know what? We're tired of the Trey Archers. We're tired of the D'Angelo Williams. Let's make a, cop- a carbon copy of the back that we got. So they're bringing in two big boys. So let's talk about the Steelers draft overall. I know let's – you know, you can go in any order if you want. You want to go up number one pick? Oh, no, yeah. Like, might as well start at the top of the tree and work our way down to the roots. Okay, no, number one, uh, T.J. Watt. Yeah, I know we talked about this quarter draft. I love this kid's pick up me. I think he actually has a higher end than even his brother will have in the draft. I, I look at this guy. Dude, my concern with him was the injuries. You know, it took him a couple of years to get on the field. This was his first time uh, starting out there. But he projects as a starting outside linebacker in a 3-4 scheme, and they already have him uh, penciled in behind Harrison. You know, Harrison has been great in his own right, but he's 39 years old. You're looking at a kid that attacks and disrupts the rhythm of blockers with his violence. I mean, he rarely allows himself to get locked up. He's got a great reach, feels this. This is the type of guy that I could even see dropping back into the early portion of the secondary in zone coverage. What he brings to the table right now is an element that they were hoping to get with Jarvis Jones. Okay, what they ended up doing was repeat and rinse. They're bringing in another guy, but this is a guy that comes in a whole lot more hungrier. If if I had to describe this kid on the field, he's a freaking cannibal. He'll go out there and eat anything in sight. The biggest concern, though, that I have about him, though, is don't put him on the defensive line. He's got that tween of size. I don't think that bulk is ever going to be growing much more than it is right now. He's got good reactive quickness, but he's not naturally explosive enough for me to have him play with his hand down. Is there anybody at that position that the Steelers could have taken that you would have preferred to see? You sound pretty satisfied with that pick. Yeah, well, I told you guys on the show, if it was going to come down to a linebacker, I was hoping it was going to be either him or Bowser. I knew that Reddick was gone. Hell, Watt was my number two rated linebacker on my board, as far as my outside guys go. Foster definitely was my number one. I was hoping that Gerard Davis wouldn't slide to him, because I'm really concerned about Davis's shoulder issues. I know that they're going to go ahead with Vince on the inside. You know, Vince is Crash Gordon when he's out there on the football field, but bring him wide in this was an element that the defense definitely needed okay let's move on to number two i don't know if some eyebrows were raised with the usc receiver your thoughts on him I like the guy, you know, uh, he's had a couple of injury issues out there, but you got to see what he's done on the field. Broad shoulder stick, powerful limbs. I guess that the uh, dirty pictures that Darius Hayward Bay has on uh, the general manager are not going to be a moot point. I see him taking over starting this year at the flanker spot if Octavius Bryant does a move over there and wins it. I think what you got to look at, you got to look at, we, you know, I was never a fan of to begin with, but Hayward Bay, I think, is the most overrated receiver out there. And Sammy Coates, I would say, is nothing but a poor man table bay anyway. You need the big guys in this league. You saw what Brian did, the impact that he had. You saw what happened without these big boys out there because Antonio Bryant was getting a lot of company when he stepped out on the football field. This thing breaks it. And I tell you one, guys, you're going to love the way he stiff lines people. You're going to love his leg drive. And this is one hellified determined runner coming out of USC and Schuster. Okay, so he's not really as explosive as Bryant, but he's pretty big. He's got the big frame, though, but he's not the... Well, you know, you go look at a Brandon Marshall. Here's what it comes down to, John. I don't care if you get me that 10 yards by running 4-2, or I don't care if you get me that 10 yards by running over four people to get it. Either way, it's 10 yards. Either way, it's a first down. Okay, let's move on to the to the next pick, uh, cornerback from... Um... Tennessee, I believe. 
Oh, uh, he's not going to play cornerback in the NFL. Right. He plays cornerback in the NFL. Ross Cockrell will hold up on uh, his job. You saw down at the Senior Bowl, he seemed very tentative when he was playing on the outside. He's got average speed. He's got, he struggles a lot to recover once the receiver gains a step. I, I, I'm not too much of a fan of him in transition. I don't think this is the type of guy with his high hips and the way that he runs up on his heels that I want out on a corner. Now, however, if you move him into safety or if you play him in the slot, this could, could be fierce. He's a composed athlete. He's got smooth body control. The quick feet with his straight line burst. I like the way that he gathers. He's quick to read plays in front of him. He's got that good sinking motion and his plant and drive ability. This is the type of guy that I would bring in and even though he's 188 pounds, I would have to look at him more as a safety and maybe because I'm a little prejudiced because they took baby Ike later on in the draft. So, of course, the Steelers came out and, and raved about him and whatnot, but do you t- if, if you're going to move him to safety, don't you just take a safety at that position? Why take a guy who's got to move to safety? John, there were 57 defensive backs taken in this draft. There was a lot of people running off the border. Now, like I said, if you looked at the safeties that were out there, out of the top 20 safeties, two of them were bigger than six foot two. Four of them were 215 pounds or better. Only four of them ran on the four five five in the 40 yard dash. I was scared with the safety crop that came out this year. I mean, after you got past Adams, after you got past the kid over at UConn, everybody else is buyer beware. So now you take a kid that showed you for a week down at uh, uh, down at Mobile that yeah hey maybe I'm an alternative yeah maybe I could play cornerback but maybe I could be a better safety for you I think the long range prospect for him is more so inside playing the ball and playing the man. They always seem to make a pick like that that kind of makes me scratch my head and you just wonder. If they couldn't have done better with the pick, but you know, they I guess they No, look at Sean Davis. This was this was a college cornerback till his final year there, and you know, uh, I don't think they're gonna throw Sean Davis back right now, at least not till they find another strong safety. I think so, Mitchell may be looking over his shoulder though, because if Brian Allen comes through with the cornerback spot and even Brian Allen, here's another guy that I think eventually could end up as a cover two linebacker. Wow. So the Steelers, like they finally, I guess Landry Jones maybe might finally start sweating a little bit. Like the Steelers may have finally found their quarterback that they'll develop and groom for two or three years down the road, Joshua Dobbs. Uh, Joshua Dobbs, if he doesn't make it over here, at least I want him over at the Pacific because when uh, Gook McGook starts shooting off his nuclear missiles, I want a rocket scientist in my hole. <laughs> You, you were very high on him. We talked about him extensively last week. Before the well, the thing with him, John, what I'm looking at now is the trick plays I could use with this guy because here I am with Pittsburgh. We got, you know, not exactly what we call a fleet of foot at Big Ben in the backfield. But if I bring this kid in, I could operate as a wildcat. I could even use him on some place possibly as a third down receiver or a third down back coming out of the backfield. But on top of it is I know that if Ben goes down, I'm instantly changing the offense by putting him in there. But what happens when you instantly change the offense? The defense takes a while to adjust to it. So Big Ben goes down and you end up bringing in Dobbs. All of a sudden, that D, that game plan for a slow-moving quarterback, so all the guys are looking at, hey, here goes a little scat out there on the football field. So do you see him uh, potentially becoming a backup this year? John, I uh, not only see him becoming a backup, I see him as the eventual heir apparent. And let me tell you why. You look at Russell Wilson. You look at Tony Romo. You look at these guys that, how could I put it, uh, their brain transcends their athletic ability and gets the most out of their athletic powers. That's what you're going to get from Dobbs. You're going to like this kid. This is going to be one of those special picks, and everybody years from now is going to go, wow, how did he slide down that far? Okay, so what other picks did you like? I don't. I'm not going to go through every one of them. I know. Oh, I loved the kind of pick because the simple reason was I felt that he was perfectly ideal for that system. And you got to look at Bell. Bell is not exactly what we call a 16 game player over here. So now you got a guy that comes in, and it's not like my offensive linemen all of a sudden have to adjust. And that's what they had to do with Williams. It was a different type of blocking scheme for Williams than you did with Bell. With Bell, you knew, okay, guys, we're just going to blow everybody off the ball. 
With Williams, you sort of had to widen the holes a little bit bigger because he was smaller. He needed to get through. Now, all of a sudden, you got uh, you got kind of coming in behind him. And I'm telling you, he didn't have a great career with that pickup of Ruchon, uh, uh, Ruchon Shell on the free agent market. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. I got the same type of guy coming out of the backfield for me. Great, good, maybe. Well, they... I'm sorry, we're having some phone issues here. You have a plane to catch. You're going over uh, to Europe for a while, do some basketball scouting, so we're going to be missing you for a while. But, man, we cannot thank you enough for the time that you've given us leading up to the draft, and we're looking forward to talking to you when you get back from your trips. We, we wish you safe travels and you know, much love, man. Thank you so much for everything. We'll be talking to you really, really soon. All right, you take care, bud. Thanks for joining us for another edition of the John Harris Podcast. Join us again next week for John Harris exclusively on the airnetwork.net.